Hey y'all, it's Sarah, the wine-loving bookworm, coming to you on this Sunday, or very rainy Sunday in Florida because of Cristobal. Um, and it's not coming over us, but it is sending us a ton of freaking rain. There were tornadoes in the area yesterday, all that jazz. Um, okay, so tonight I am going to review three books. I read three books last week. I was doing a detox, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and um, I just had a lot of extra time, I guess, to read. <laughs> I wasn't drinking and eating and <laughs> whatever else. Um, so I got through three books. Two of them were real short, and then the other one was kind of like a book about the detox, a little bit about his, like, the guy who invented the detox, his guidelines for eating and nutrition and all that stuff. So it's more of a manual than a book, but I'll talk about that later. Okay, so tonight let's start with the wine. My mom came over Friday and she had a glass of this and I was like, I want one, but I didn't have one. <laughs> so I only had two more days to go. But anyway, it's a Pinot Grigio. It's um, the collection Pinot Grigio from California. There's no real description on it. And I didn't do a lot of research because I'm doing two books or three books. I wanted to go kind of fast. So I didn't do a lot of research tonight. Actually, zero research. Um, so it doesn't give a description of what it tastes like. My mom was kind of like, eh, it's okay. I'll drink it. <laughs> but she's more picky with wine than I am. So let's give it a shot. Cheers. Mmm, that's good. It's like a little tangy. Oh, and this is the first drink I've had in over a week, so... Hopefully I don't get too loopy during this. Let's try one more time. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. Hmm. I'll drink it. Okay, so let's start with the first book. I told you guys last week I was going to read The Hideaway. My mother-in-law recommended it. Lauren K. Denton. This is sort of a love story, but not really. It's not like a love-love story, okay? I don't love love stories. How many times am I going to say love? Uh, I think you guys know that, but... This was more than a love story. It was kind of surrounding a bed and breakfast in Alabama, Sweet Bay, Alabama. I don't know if that's a real place or not. And it's about a woman whose grandmother passes away and gives her this bed and breakfast. And so it's kind of like going through the grandmother's life and then through the granddaughter's life. There's romance in it, of course, but it wasn't really overly done. Um, it wasn't all you know, sappy and whatever. So I actually liked it. You know, I thought it was pretty good. It's a very easy read. Very good, like, beach read. Um, great, like, southern charm. Um, I just really, I loved it. And I love the grandmother. I loved her life. I love, she kind of came from a very privileged upbringing to being kind of like a little hippie um, person in the end. So free, free spirit. Just a great book. Like, I thought it was very, I just thought it was good. You know, it just... A, very, a lighter book than what I've been reading and what I'm going to be reading this week. I'll let you in on that in a minute. Uh, but I really liked it. So The Hideaway by Lauren K. Denton. Really good book, beach book. Beach read, right? Plain, anything like that you're doing over the summer. I don't know if anybody's traveling. But if you are, this would be a good one to pick up. So The Hideaway. Next, I read Ordinary People by Judith Guest. And this book is a little depressing. <laughs> it's a little different than Hideaway. Um, it's It's... Short, but, you know, the words are kind of small, so it's not as short as it looks. I guess it was a movie in the 80s. I have it on my Netflix queue to watch. Basically, it's about a family with two sons. One of the sons drowns, and it's how the entire family is affected by the loss of that son and how they're all kind of unraveling in different ways and the different ways each of them deal with it, the brother, the dad, the mom, and how they are relating to each other through all of it. It was really good. It was kind of subtle, you know, and it just, it, I think it painted a really intricate, interesting picture of what happens when grief strikes your family and how people can really react in different ways, react in ways that seem cruel and cold, but it's just their way of dealing with things. Um, so I liked it. I really liked it. Um, I wish they would have kind of explored the mom's character a little bit more. She seemed a little one-dimensional to me. Uh, she was dealing with her grief in a certain way, but she did not come off as a likable character at all. And she lost her son. It, it, there's something there, you know, but it didn't come through in the book. So I didn't love the mom character, but the dad and the son were just, that were great. And it was just a good book, a very subtle book. You know, it's not all things happening and blah, blah, blah. It's just a subtle, 
great book about grief in a family. So yeah, it's a little depressing, but I thought it was a really great book and I'm going to watch the movie when I get a chance. And um, hopefully, I mean, I'm sure it's not as good as the book because it never is, but I'm interested. All right. So that's the second book I read last week. Third book I read, Rain Barrel Effect. Now this was the book that is um, kind of went along with the detox I did. Since this pandemic started, I've just been eating and drinking and doing whatever I wanted to do. And I gained a lot of weight. I didn't feel good. I didn't feel like myself. Um, I have a lot of trouble slowly making changes. I just kind of keep in the same route or rut I'm in. So I needed something to just bounce me out of this. So I decided to look into doing like a detox. Some I was looking at a three-day detox at first, but my friend Brandy recommended this Stephen Cabral's detox to me. Um, and it was a seven day detox. The first two days are like literally just 200 calories a day drinking this shake that tastes like liquid shock. It was really bad. I didn't think I was going to make it through. But the next five days you can, you have a shake in the morning and a shake in the afternoon, but then you eat lunch and dinner, healthy lunch and dinner, but you know, no alcohol, you know, very, no, I, I, you can have a little bit of animal protein at night, but vegetarian for the most part. I felt amazing. I lost almost nine pounds. I feel great. Like I said, I'm, ha I'm not going to get swear off alcohol forever. I'm drinking it right now. But I, it really has changed my thinking just in that week and changed my body. And I want to keep on this, like keep on a better path. So this is always what I need. It's like a little detox to, to get me back and jumpstart me out of this whole crap we've been dealing with lately. So anyway, The Rain Barrel Effect is the book he wrote that kind of details his philosophy and how he thinks your body works and how he thinks we're all basically overloaded with heavy metals and you got to detox yourself from heavy metals. Some of the stuff I'm like, I don't really agree with. I don't th I think that's kind of pseudoscience. He is a doctor, um, but there's nothing wrong with a holistic approach to your health as long as you're not downing real scientific things you know like he would kind of intimate vaccines might give you high toxins which I absolutely don't believe in vaccinate 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 is my mantra um why do you want your child to have some deadly disease I don't I don't get it like you don't do it I don't agree with you but whatever I'm a vaccinate vaccination proponent um and also some of the stuff he was talking about I'm just like that's not, I don't know, I don't believe in it. But I do believe in a totally holistic approach to your health and to your weight and to your body and nutrition. So some of the stuff I just needed kind of like a refresher on, and I got it. And this book, I don't know that I'd really recommend it um, unless you're really into this kind of stuff. He's in, what is it called, Ayurvedic? I think that's what it's called, Ayurvedic Health, which is kind of like an Indian, Eastern way of doing your, your health and your body and nutrition and all that stuff. So he's a functional doctor. I think he's also he's a medical doctor, but he's also got certified in homeopathic and neuropathic and functional medicine. So it's an interesting approach, and I do like some of the stuff he has to say. And I am going to, and I really like his shakes. Once I started not mixing them with water, if you mix them with like a little almond milk and berries, they're amazing. So I actually ordered a bunch more <laughs> to have. They're a little pricey, but I like them. So anyway, The Rain Barrel Effect by Stephen Cabral. If you're kind of interested in that stuff, it wasn't a bad read. It's just some of the stuff I'm like, eh, you know, I don't really believe in that. But you can take what you want out of it, and you can learn a little bit from it too, like I did. So that was the last book I read. Now, it's long, but it's kind of like, you know, see how there's like double spaced and stuff? So, and you could skip over parts of it. You're just like, I don't want to listen. I don't want to hear that or read that, you know, skip it over. All right. So those are my three books I read this week. Um... Hideaway by, what's her name? Lauren K. Denton and Judith Guest. Guest? Is that right? Yes. Ordinary People. Those definitely picked up. Pick up. They were good. Now, um, next week, I am reading Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. Um, this is my book club book, and it is so topical right now because it's about race relations and racial inequality in the criminal justice system. And this guy was a nonprofit sort of like legal aid attorney for um pe people and men in Alabama that who are on death row that he believed did not were not supposed to be there and when you read some of the cases you're like how did this guy ever get even if he did it how did he get death for this this is crazy so he worked on a lot of these cases 
against a very racially biased system down in Alabama, trying to get them, trying to get stays of execution, trying to get them exonerated. And so far, I've only read about 100 pages. It's kind of a little bleak, which you expect. I think this is like the 70s and 80s when he's doing this. So it's a bit bleak. Um, but maybe you'd expect that in Alabama. I am, it's really good though. I mean, I have, I've torn through the first hundred pages. I can't wait. I, I really love social justice books and um, all that stuff. So this is my book club book. So it'll be interesting. I think book club's Thursday. I'm not sure if I'm be able to go. I think I have my kid, um, but we'll see. And cause I think they're doing it like actually at the bookstore now, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll play it by ear. But anyway, just mercy. I'll let you know how it is next week. Okay. So that's all for me. Pick up Ordinary People in Hideaway. Pick up Rainbow Effect if you're interested at all in that stuff. And get yourself some, what's it called again? The Collection Pinot Grigio. I think this is delicious. Oh, yeah. It's like tangy and refreshing. Love it. All right, guys. That's it for me. I will see you next week when I review Just Mercy. Cheers. <laughs>